Reading in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8, uh, deacons are not to be double-tongued. They are to, in verse 9, hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Deacons are ministers in the church. And what does it mean to hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience? You know, there's many mysteries in the Bible. There's mystery of godliness, mystery of faith, and there's other ones I I can't think of them now. But here we see a mystery of the faith. We know that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, the faith, it's a gift of God. So we're saved by grace through faith. And it's the faith of Christ that saves us. And we're to hold tightly to that mystery of faith because our faith in Jesus Christ is what makes us righteous. It is our trust in him, his righteousness, his work on the cross that saves us. The mystery of faith that we are saved just by putting our simple trust, our faith in the one who died for all our iniquity, putting our faith in the one who laid down his life so that his righteousness can be imputed on us and he takes our sin upon himself. He took that and all we have to do is by faith receive the gift of salvation And trust that it is finished. And holding on to that mystery of faith in a pure conscience. You can't have a pure conscience or clear conscience when you don't settle your mind in the faith of Christ. When you don't hold on to faith. It says, that in 1 Timothy 4, 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Now this is something that is contrary to holding on to the mystery of faith. Departing from the faith. How? By giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. These are, this is deception. And the devil is the one who deceives. Who, he's the one who beguiles like the serpent that beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden. The serpent beguiled Eve to depart from the faith that she had in God, her creator. Now, we depart from the faith by giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils is contrary to sound doctrine, which is grounded in the word of God in the doctrine of Christ, thus opposite of the doctrine of devils. And what are they seducing you from the faith, from the simplicity of the gospel that is rooted and grounded in the faith of Jesus Christ? Now, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, Now, these same people who are seduced by spirit, you know, who are seduced, giving heed to those seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, they also speak lies and hypocrisy. Jesus called the Pharisees hypocrites. Um, Why? Because 
they were presenting the flesh as good, as righteous. Speaking lies and hypocrisy is contrary to holding on to the faith and standing in that, knowing that no one is good but Christ and I am only righteous because of him, my filthy rags of works, righteousness of the old man, self-righteous deeds, those fig leaves, if I present that as a worthy of God's honor, I'm speaking, I'm being a hypocrite. When all, when all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and then I speak lies, telling fables, old wives' tales, I present myself, holding myself in high esteem and not presenting Christ who is that fragrance that God accepts. And I'm speaking lies and teaching others that, you know, you could work hard enough and be pleasing unto God, that he looks upon your works as righteousness when it's all about his grace, when it's all about the faith of Christ in me. And the those who are hating seducing, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils are also tend to speak lies and hypocrisy because that's all the speakings that those seducing spirits speak. That's all they teach. Lies. That's all Satan wrote. You know. And if we go down to reading verse 6, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So holding on to the mystery of faith in pure conscience, we are good ministers of Jesus Christ. Nourish, you know, nur- you know, Jesus Christ being dispensed as food and drink, we're nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine which is Jesus Christ is the center. He is the, the, the chief cornerstone. He is the foundation. He is everything. That good t- doctrine, that sound doctrine, his words, Jesus being the word and his, the words of faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're nourished up in the words of faith and, and of good doctrine. And whereunto thou has we we have attained, okay. We hold on to the word we first heard, the gospel. The gospel. It says in verse seven, but refuse profane and old wives' fables. You know, irreverent, silly myths. There's a whole lot of. <sighs> I don't know, I don't, I'm saying it wrong, but the vain janglings out there and fables and, you know, just confusing stories, making God to be a caricature, making, mischaracterizing him.
fables, myths, maybe even Greek mythology. So many doctrines of devils. And they give false impression, impressions of God and far from the truth. And it all ends up in, you know, in the pride of man thinking that they could be like God if, if they have to work hard enough to attain God's status um, or be the God of themselves, that they're good enough. Uh, just many things. And it's saying, refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather onto godliness. You know, fiction isn't nonfiction. Fiction and fantasy isn't reality, right? Fables isn't the truth. They're stories. So we should exercise our, or train ourselves for godliness or exercise thyself rather onto godliness. Pretty much study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Understand the truth. Know the truth. The truth shall set you free. If you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Godliness is 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 in relation to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It relates to discerning the truth. In verse 8, it says, For bodily exercise profiteth little. Uh, I like to go to the gym like twice a week. I try to. But it says here, bodily exercise profit little. But what should we do? Exercise ourselves rather unto godliness. It says, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. You know, God has given us all we need pertaining to life and godliness. Every, all, those, all is made available to us. Jesus Christ provides everything that we need for life, the life that we live now and the life to come. Because he is eternal life. Life eternal. The living water that springs up into eternal life, which is within us. He is in us. He promises life now. Eternity starts now. Eternity is outside of time. So we once we believe we step into eternity, we step into a, another realm. Bodily exercise is just in relation to this earthly body we have. This is it's temporal, but Godliness is eternal. Godliness is godliness. Jesus Christ, He is God. You know, godliness like like, um, in the likeness and similitude of God. And what does it say in Scripture? Where as we behold Him, we are being transformed into His image. That's godliness. And our transformation into his images as we behold him. He is the word. And the word is, re the, the Holy Spirit reveals Christ in the word. And as we behold him in scripture and in the spirit, we are transformed into his likeness. From glory to glory, from faith to faith. 
That's godliness. And that profits onto us profitable onto all things. And it says in verse 9, just to affirm that it's profitable unto all things, he says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Deserve, trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Like you best believe this is a true saying. Okay. And I want to go back to where it says having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, a hot iron is sizzling hot. Like you you press that onto your skin and you're burning your skin clear off. And of course it's gonna leave a scar. And the skin there won't be the same as as before, right? It'll be burnt, scar tissue, dead. Um, so we don't want to have our conscience seared with a hot iron. And what is that that intense heat that's being pressed onto our conscience? It's, it's the, the lies. It's the 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 seduction, the what the false doctrines and false teachings that these devils and these seducing spirits um, tempt you with and and feed you, and whisper into your ears, and even when you heed it, it's like you're sitting under their tutelage and you're just imbibing it and ingesting it. And you're putting that, you know, swallowing what they're saying, the hypocrisy, the lies. And yet you don't even know that your conscience is being seared, is being burnt. It's dangerous is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) And how can you, how do you, how can you recognize this? You need to have a pure conscience to recognize. You need to discern. You know, we our hearts, you know, is, is made up of our soul and our conscience. And our conscience is 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 that um link between our spirit and our soul, right? And having a pure conscience help, gives us a confidence. And a faith in God that we that we know who He is as our Father, and we can come boldly to His throne in time of need. Any time, not even in our time of need, but we can come boldly to Him. The veil has been torn, so we have access. But with a seared conscience, with an evil and defiled conscience that has been that has been seared by terrible doctrines of devils and seducing spirits, false teachings, lies from the enemy. And and those things are always all around us, but when we take heed to it and we listen we open up our ears to listen you know faith comes by hearing the word of god but what is the opposite of that our faith you know there's a departure there is a searing of our conscience there is a weakening of our faith when we give heed to these lies lying spirits our conscience is being seared. And with a seared conscience, you can't discern. You can't discern good and evil. You can't discern what is good to eat versus what is, you know, what is good to eat from the tree of life versus the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can't discern. 
and you'll eat anything. Your conscience is seared. So we just have to be careful and to continue in the faith of Christ. Hold on to the faith. Have confidence in the faith of Christ. Hold on to him. (laughs) We strive to enter his rest. That's faith. We have confidence that in his rest, we are safe. We are satisfied. We're at peace. And our conscience is cleared. It's clear. And we're resting in in Jesus. And we're sitting before him. Beholding him. Our conscience is clear. It's pure. We're free. We have liberty in Jesus Christ. A seared conscience doesn't make you confident. You cower. You're in bondage. You're being entangled and shackled. Apart from faith, it's impossible to please God. And... We just need to know the truth. We believe and we know the truth. Let's keep our consciences clear. All right. I love you guys. I hope um, I was able to speak clearly. I just really had it up on my heart to speak on our con about our consciences and I hope I was able to deliver all right take care bye-bye